On one of my previous videos, someone asked David a question about Jesus' authority to forgive sins. David, in reply, gave a short but pungent answer, but since this question often comes up, I'd like to take this occasion to expand upon his remark. Nikita wrote, Hey David Wood, I was in an argument with a Muslim about Jesus being God, where I pointed out that Jesus forgave sins, which the Quran and Bible agree that only God can do. He replied, Nowhere did Jesus say, I forgive your sins. He simply said, Your sins are forgiven, which doesn't mean that he was the one who forgave the sins, but God told him that his sins are forgiven, and Jesus delivered the message to him. What do you say to that? David replied, Keep reading, because he specifically says, in the exact same passage, that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. The passage that David is referring to here is found in Mark 2, as well as in Matthew 9 and Luke 5. For the sake of simplicity, I'll limit my comments to the account as given in Mark 2. Now, the Muslim that Nikita is arguing with here, as well as many other Muslims who pick this line of reasoning up from liberals like crumbs off a table, is that because Jesus uses the passive voice, your sins are forgiven, rather than the active voice, I forgive your sins, that Jesus is not claiming the authority or prerogative to forgive sins, but merely to announce that sins have been forgiven by God because God has made a special revelation to Jesus regarding this man's forgiveness. But there are at least five problems with this attempt to circumvent the clear teaching of this passage. First, Notice that this text doesn't say anything about a revelation being made by God to Jesus. This is a classic case of eisegesis, an exegetical fallacy that consists of reading something into a verse that isn't there. Now, notice then what ends up happening. Since this person wants to put the emphasis on the divine passive, that is, that God has forgiven this man's sin and Jesus is just announcing it, if this were actually what's going on in the passage, then what it ends up affirming is that Jesus has an immediate, intuitive, and certain awareness that God has forgiven this man's sin, even though God hasn't revealed it to Jesus. This argument, in other words, backfires. It unwittingly ends up affirming that Jesus has the most intimate union with the Father that enables him to know, without revelation, what God has done. Second, if the use of the passive indicates that the Father, rather than Jesus, has forgiven this man's sin, then the scribes in the passage would have had no grounds for their objection. They wouldn't have replied in the way that they did. Why does this man speak that way? He is blaspheming. Who can forgive sins but God alone? The scribes in this text, that is, Jesus' original audience, his contemporaries, those who would be expected to understand his manner of speaking, recognized that he was laying claim to the divine prerogative to forgive sins. In fact, the response that the scribes make to Jesus in this context is the same response that we find them making elsewhere when Jesus pronounces a person's sins forgiven. For example, in Luke 7, we're told of a sinful but penitent woman who comes and anoints the head of Christ with perfume and washes his feet with her tears. This act on the part of the woman, showing her repentance and faith, elicits the following response from the Lord Jesus. Then he said to her, Your sins have been forgiven. Those who were reclining at the table with him began to say to themselves, Who is this man who even forgives sins? And he said to the woman, Your faith has saved you, Go in peace. Third, if Jesus were just pronouncing the Father's forgiveness of this man's sin, rather than exercising his own authority to forgive on earth, then Jesus would have corrected the scribes in this passage. For example, he could have said to them, Didn't you notice that I used the divine passive? But that's not what Jesus does. Fourth, not only did Jesus not correct their interpretation of his pronouncement that this man's sins were forgiven, 
but he goes on to directly reply to their accusation of blasphemy by saying that he does have the authority to forgive sins. But so that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, he said to the paralytic, I say to you, get up, pick up your pallet, and go home. Fifth, since in the nature of the case divine forgiveness is not something that can be witnessed by our senses, Jesus goes on to give a visible demonstration of his authority by pronouncing the man healed. Which is easier, to say to the paralytic, your sins are forgiven, or to say, get up and pick up your pallet and walk? But so that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, he said to the paralytic, I say to you, get up and pick up your pallet and go home. And he got up and immediately picked up the pallet and went out in the sight of everyone, so that they were all amazed and were glorifying God, saying, We have never seen anything like this. And so through multiple lines of evidence, this text clearly teaches that Jesus exercised the prerogative to forgive sins, which only God can do. The only way to get around the clear teaching of this text is either by asserting that it says something it doesn't say, or by ignoring what it does say.